so in the last class we stopped at this point we were discussing non linear filters for noise removal uh, non linear filters like median filter where we take a neighborhood and in that neighborhood we find a median value and replace the pixel value with the median value so why was media uh, what kind of noise uh, median filter preference sort of noise okay what is that okay so those are the extreme values and those can be very easily filtered out using a median value um sometimes as we seen some examples in the previous slide that uh, when the when the density of the noise when the spatial density of the noise is large and then uh, either we have to go for a very large size median filter but then that also causes lot of distortion or we will have to iterate many times uh we have to go we have to iterate many passes of of a small size median filter <clears throat> so uh, it would be ideal if we can uh, adopt the size of the median filter depending on the noise characteristics in different regions of the image so this adaptive median filtering algorithm that we are going to discuss will do exactly that it will basically the key idea is that it will try to adjust the filter size uh, on uh, as per the different uh, as per wherever the noise region is wherever, wherever the spatial density of the noise is large in that region it will try to take a larger size and wherever it is less it will try to work with a smaller size filter smaller size filter is preferable if you want to have less distortion if you increase the size of the filter the smoothing or the blurring will be more so we want to achieve these two purpose simultaneously we want to remove uh especially dense impulse noise so salt and pepper noise is also called impulse noise because those are like extreme impulse values and at the same time we want to minimize distortion as much as possible so to to understand the algorithm we'll first see what the notations that we will use uh, so in a neighborhood of a sxy is the neighborhood of a pixel at a point x comma y so in that neighborhood we will first identify find out the mean the min the minimum and the maximum intensity values in that region and also as well as the median value so for that we will be anyhow sorting it and picking out the min max and the median values as well as the actual value at that location the actual value at x comma y location the which is which we are trying to modify and also we'll use one uh, notation of s max that is the maximum allowed size of the neighborhood that is the filter size so we'll initially start with a, a small filter size of 3 by 3 and till what maximum level you want to go you will just fit a, fix a limit so that limit will be specified by this maximum size of the filter so this algorithm will work in two stages in the first stage basically uh, the first stage uh, tries to basically adjust the filter size uh, it tries to increase it. so it we as we said we'll start from low small size filter 3 by 3 and then it will try to keep on increasing the size of the filter window or the filter uh, the neighborhood till uh, we are sure that that the median value will not be one of the noise values and in the second level once we are uh, once we have decided the optimum filter size then we will go to the next level where we will try to uh, decide the actual output value that we would like to give so in the first level what it is trying to do basically it is trying to see whether the median value is less than the max value greater than the sorry uh so if a1 is greater than 0 and a2 is less than 0 means our median value will be greater than minimum and less than maximum value 
if that is true that means the current neighborhood is sufficient for us we don't need to increase the size because our median is because if there is a noise if there is a impulse noise in that region it will be either the z min or the z max z min or z max will correspond to the impulse noise salt of paper noise so if there is a noise in that neighborhood it uh, and the the median value that we are uh, the median value that we are able to obtain from that neighborhood if it is different from these two noise then we are sure that this median value is not one of the noise value it is one of the it belongs to one of the image intensity values only so then we need not to increase the size but if it is not true if the spatial when it will not be true then the spatial density of the noise is large so then it may have happen that the median value also comes out to be one of these uh, impulse values so in that case we will increase the window size to the next increments from 3 by 3 will go to 5 by 5 and we'll recompute this and we'll again till till this uh, till this is satisfied we'll keep on increasing the window size up to the maximum limit that that we have fixed will not go beyond that because probably that will cause very ex huge blurring so we don't want to do that also so this will ensure level 1 will assure that we have obtained we have adjusted the filter size and we have obtained a median value which is different from the noise value okay so once we have obtained that we'll go to level b what what level b is doing basically it is basically saying that whether zxy which is the actual pixel value at the center location is greater than the min and less than the max so if that is true the traditional median filter what it does irrespective of there is a noise in that at that point or not it always substitute it by the median value which may cause unnecessary distortion if uh, only when there is a noise then only we need to modify that value otherwise leave it unchanged so the 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 purpose of this stage 2 is exactly that it is trying to see assess whether the current intensity value if it is not one of the extreme values then probably it is not noise then then just output the same value don't change it only if it is one of the impulse noise then change it to the median value so it is doing it is achieving both purpose it is trying to reduce distortion as much as possible as well as in case if there is a dense noise it will try to get a appropriate median value which will be different from the noise value i hope you understand the logic of these two stages hmm? so let us see the 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 performance of this algorithm so this is an image which is corrupted by a high density special noise uh, this impulse noise and uh, this is the image performed by standard median filter with a size 7 by 7 as you can see it has been able to uh, because we have chosen a larger size filter it has been able to remove most of the noise but at the same at the cost of lot of distortion you can see the connector pins they have been distorted heavily and so on and this is the image with the uh, adaptive median algorithm that we discussed just now with the maximum limit as 7 this has also reduced uh, most uh, most of the intensity uh, most of the noise region but at the same time if you compare the distortions is much less in this image especially if you see the uh, the connector pins on the chips these are much much more preserved than the the traditional filter that we do straight forward is that clear hmm? is that okay so we have discussed smoothing and noise removal on the opposite we may want to sometimes we may want to sharpen the image um, because the image may be too blurred that may have so we would like to have a more sh uh, sharpened image that means we would like to highlight the edges <coughs> highlight the uh, uh, intensity values at uh, i will show what do you mean by sharpening in example but i we just want to do the reverse of smoothing so what kind of operation should we do that will achieve that task 
So for for smoothening for blurring, what we were doing, we were taking an average. So if you want to do the reverse, what should odd percent should we do? Hmm? Maximum. What is the reverse of averaging? No, I don't get your intuition. Okay. Can anybody else have the answer here? I heard some other answer also from here. Somebody was telling the opposite of averaging. Hmm? Center pixel multiplied by hmm? and subtracting the okay. Mm -hmm. And somebody said differentiation. So I asked, what is the opposite of averaging? It's kind of a differentiation. So averaging is analogous to integration. So if you want to do the reverse, we can use differentiation because what, so wherever you want to highlight the changes, those changes are where there are discontinuities. So if you, if you assume our intensity values as a function, so wherever there are going to be edges, there are going to be discontinuities. So if you can measure those discontinuities and that discontinuities can be measured through differentiation operator. Okay. We can measure those discontinuities and using that, we can try to Highlight that it, it will what you are also telling will be kind of same thing. We'll see how. Mm -hmm. In the previous in the his exam. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so let us we'll see different uh, things. It's this this thing is little uh, will. Um, that we'll do a, a detailed discussions because there are many aspects involved here. But before we actually come to the filter design, even before digital images, the uh, when we were dealing with analog images, the way images were being sharpened uh, was used doing something called unsharp masking. Basically, the idea there was uh, if you take the original original image. <coughs> And if you take the smooth version or the blurred version of that image, and basically if you subtract them, for example, in this case, if you subtract from this signal, this signal, you are basically getting the rate of discontinued. Uh, you are basically it's kind of a differentiation operation operation that you are doing here. You are you are measuring the rate of change at this location. It's not exactly. Uh, the rate of change here is I think it's the second derivative here because the first derivative is, should be zero here should be non zero here and again zero here the second derivative will be non zero here and non zero here and it will be zero here zero here and zero here so it's you are basically getting kind of a uh, you are basically measuring the rate of change at these discontinuities so this is this will be kind of an edge in your image where you are going from one transiting from one object region to another object region. So as you can see, uh, so if you get this, so this for this we are calling unsharp mask. So wherever uh, uh, and yeah, so it will be basically masking out unsharp regions. This was the technique which was being done in for analog uh, situations. So they would take this unsharp mask and they will add it to this original image and we are not going to use this technique it's I just to give you the intuition if you have a original signal f and if you have a blurred thing if you get this thing this kind of a response we'll see how to get this kind of a response that is our objective if we get this kind of a response then if we add it to the original signal basically it is going to emphasize these discontinuities further as a result your, your transitions will become more sharp and they will get highlighted and I think you can see the is this was the original signal and this is the sharpened signal by doing this uh, operations and you can see this
here probably the the transitions are, here the edges are very blurred but here the edges have become more sharpened so that is what we are uh, so what we have to first and try to understand how do how we will do spatial differentiation in image uh, what is uh, basically how to do because spatial differentiation is going going to basically give us the rate of change of functions and that will help us to uh, understand where are the where where are the locations where there are discontinuities these discontinuities may be either due to edge or maybe due to noise or whatever uh, so whatever differentiation operation that we derive it should be proportional to the degree of discontinuity of the image at that location so how do we define differentiation special differentiation so for a 2d function in because in our case we have uh, x and y as variable so it's a two dimensional function so uh, along one dimension we have to take a partial derivative and a partial derivative this is the standard definition of a partial derivative so over a small change in the variable we find out the difference in the uh, actual function in our discrete uh, because we are not dealing with continuous function we have images what is the smallest delta change that that we have in x or in y it's one pixel because between two pixels we don't have we have lost already due to samples we don't have values here. so the smallest difference that we can take is of one pixel so we can define our uh, derivative partial derivative operator either in x or y direction by taking a difference by taking a difference of two consecutive pixels in x direction or y direction so either we can define uh, take a right difference that means we can take fx plus 1 minus fx or we can go for a left difference backward difference from current minus back or sometimes which is more useful is a central difference then we are basically taking the uh, difference between the forward and the backward and now because there is difference of two pixels so i'm dividing it by two <clears throat> so any of these things should be a approximation of a differential operator in our discrete domain and we'll see how we will use them Ma many times we'll also use second derivatives uh, second derivative how will you define so if we take a double derivative of this if another derivative of this function then we'll get the second derivative so that will so at x comma y you will get this y because again if you take the forward difference and then minus of so this will get rearranged to this so basically adding the left and the right neighbor and subtracting two times the current value so this so let us see whether it really acts the way we want whether these definitions of the first derivative and second derivative how they behave on uh, changes in intensity value so this is a sample uh, 1d example of uh, our in intensity values so as we can see there are for some pixels there is a constant intensity value and then there is a change and then there is a gradual constant decrease which is basically a ramp function and then again there is a constant here and then this is a step step increase this is a sudden increase which is a sharp sharp increase so the intensity values along this scan line is this 665 so if you if you apply the first derivative the forward difference so and this location it will be 0 0 at this location it will be this minus this which will be minus 1 and so on at the next location minus 1 minus 1 and so on here this minus this is 0 so again it becomes 0 at this location it is 6 minus 1 becomes 5 and then again for the 0 so wherever there is a constant value it is zero wherever there is a sudden in, uh, uh, increase or decrease it is a 
positive so when when it is going from low to high it is a positive when it is going from high to low it is a negative value and where there is a ramp there also there is a non zero value which is a negative value in this case because it is going in the negative direction if we use our second derivative uh, function that we have defined uh, the values will be like this so at this location it will be minus 1 along the ramp it will be zero which should be the case for the second derivative operator so it is going to give a, a non zero response only at the onset and of the discontinuities like here and here and all at all other locations it is a zero value so this is the plot these are the, the square represent the second derivative uh, operator uh, response and the dots represent the first derivative response so as per our previous intuition if you want to highlight only the edges if you want we wanted this response here here so which one of the first derivative or second derivative do you think should be will be useful our second derivative is giving a better will be more easily used we will see first derivative also uh, used later on but for sharpening purposes if you just want to sharpen image we can uh, we can use uh, second derivative operator which will actually give us the uh, desired response so the second derivative operator that is used the is called basically the laplacian operation so a laplacian of any function is basically the sum of the derivative of that second derivative of that function in all the dimensions at the x y or whatever so this is a standard operation defined in mathematics so in our case we have two uh, two variables x and y so it will be basically second derivative along x direction plus second derivative on y direction so this was the derivative uh, that we defined along x analogously we can define for y our second derivative uh, response so our laplacian will be sum of these two which will be so if we add those two things we will get this equation now if you do want to design as it, this operation as a filter it's very easy to design it because you can see these are just neighbors of that and the coefficient values we can use as a filter uh, coefficients so minus 4 at the center plus 1 along the four neighbors and zero along the diagonals so if you take this filter and do that special correlation or convolution operation we will basically get the second derivative response of that image is that okay hmm one other good thing about this filter is it's simple to design it is also isotropic isotropic basically meaning that it is if you rotate it by 90 degree it will have the same response so whether your image is 90 degree rotated you will get the similar response so it will have a similar response with 90 degree rotations of uh, in a multiple of 90 degree if you be 90 180 270 90 get the similar response there are other variants of laplacian <coughs> so this was the one that we uh, derived till now if but this was only when we were taking along x and y direction the rate of we were taking uh, the rate of change along the x and y direction if you want to include diagonals also if you want to see the rate of change along the diagonal 45 45 degree directions then one will come at these locations so we'll get once along the diagonals also and uh, because we have added two two more directions so minus 2 minus 2 from each direction so the center value becomes minus 8 so this was when we were taking the forward difference the right difference if you want to take the left difference the sign will change so plus will uh, the center coefficient will become plus and the other coefficient will become minus and this one is we are taking the diagonal also into account so any of these derivatives you can any of these filters can you can use as a laplacian filter the response will change uh, slightly as because the they will represent different thing 
so an example of applying a laplacian filter on this image will be this so if you apply the laplacian operator on this you will get this image so can you see that it is basically giving a response at discontinuity so where there is an edge wherever there is an edge i think it will not wherever there is an edge there is a response here and at all other discontinuities it is giving a response here one problem with this one is that if when we are displaying it at this the negative responses will get all clipped as zero so they will all getting they are getting visualized as zero only the positive responses are being seen here so what you can do you can adjust the scale so that the zero becomes some mid at mid value so you can adjust from adjust the range and display it this way so now you see a you see more responses here so black so as you can see for example here in, in the there is a uh, there is a uh, at the discontinuity here especially along the edge there is a bright and then there is a adjacent black why do you expect this because you have seen in our uh, when there was a sharp transition Battery is cutting this. Whenever there was sharp transition, our second derivative was giving a uh, double response at the at 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 this point as well as at this point. So that's why you have a positive and a negative response both here and so on. So how will you sharpen it now? So this is the second derivative response. How will you sharpen it? So take the original image, and should we add or subtract this? Why? In the original intuition, what we were doing, we were adding the unsharp max to the original image to enhance this. In this case, we need to subtract. Why? so because we were taking forward difference we wanted this response here but the response was negative thus thus the opposite then what we wanted so to take care of that we'll just reverse the sign if we were already taking if we were already using this other variant if we were using this variant then we could have just added it but because we are using this uh, laplace we would have to subtract it so you have to keep in mind keep in mind which variant of the laplacian we are using to decide whether to add or subtract but irrespective of that if we if we superimpose this uh, the second derivative of response on the original image the new image as expected will be a a sharp image of the blurred uh, So it makes sense now hmm you can actually combine uh, all these operation in a single go so if you if you the addition or subtraction operation can also be combined and returned into one equation and you can design a filter based on that so you can reduce the number of operations you can get the whole job done by applying by taking this one filter and doing the conversion operation you will directly get the enhanced image you don't have to superimpose but you need to keep into mind uh, the sign of the center and the neighborhood depending on which variant you are basically taking into account so if if you are taking a diagonal if you are taking the diagonal one which which is also taking into account the diagonal things do you expect more sharpening or what you take the uh, the labyrinth which also takes into account the diagonal uh, rate of change the will you get a more sharp image or or no will get a more sharp image isn't it because here we are only we have emphasized that 
that is continuous in x and y direction if you are if you are taking other directions also uh, wherever there are discontinuities they will get enhanced if we increase the filter size what will happen will it be further enhancing or sharpening or no why in smoothing when we were increasing the filter size it was for the sharp because uh, the degree of smoothing was increased by increasing the filter will it happen here also because the operator that we are defining is is the, the way it has defined has been defined only along the adjacent thing so when you increase the size it will not may it may not reflect the differential operator itself in fact it may have a smoothing effect if you increase the size so that may not happen in this case we'll continue here so the uh, the second uh, we'll also use the first derivative first derivative is used in uh, so we have we we have basically uh, concluded the uh, enhancement topic so in enhancement topic we discuss different methods contrast etching noise removal sharpening smoothing through special filtering mechanism through histogram equalization and so on one interesting thing that we is very importantly used as a in a in a mid level or low level image processing operation is called edge detection because edges somehow play a very crucial role in understanding in getting some uh, the inferring about the shape and type of object in an image so as you can see here these are not full images these are just uh, sketches of of uh, certain uh, certain objects just which are having just an edges and if you just by using these edges you can exactly recognize what object it is representing that means you don't need the full image to recognize a particular object in an image if, if you just have edges edge information you can actually do a do that inferencing so that means you are you uh, if you instead of using all uh, 256 by 256 pixels if you are if you are only having edges edge will give you a very compact representation you will first of all reduce the data you will not be using all the data you will be using only few data values so edge detection may be useful either to first of all to uh, reduce the your representation of data it it will see later on it is also used for segmentation and other purpose for finding out the object boundaries and segmenting regions from one another and some useful features in an image like corners lines those those can be extracted if we can identify edges in the regions and so on so basically these all gets used at for higher level image processing or computer vision algorithms so how can we extract edges so that we'll discuss uh, now uh, so edge can be of different types edge is basically uh, uh, basically the boundary of two regions which are supposed to be of different intensity values now and it will be a local boundary and uh, so uh, normally your intensity will be values will be transiting from one range to another range and that transition may be either a very sharp transition like this uh, step edge it can be a smooth transition like a, a gradual edge or sometimes little uh, other things can also be there and there are different what are the different factors that can cause an edge in an image so in real life edges can occur because either due to change in the depth so for example here this um uh, column of this building and the background sky the depth is different so there is a um, edge will be coming because of that change the re, the intensity values may change because of that there may be a texture in the surface itself because of that the intensity is values may change as cause edge there may be shadow effect because of shadow there will be an edge that will be at, that will come in an image so edges can occur due to many things it's not just distinct object boundaries but because of all these change uh, surface orientation here 
I think the cylindrical surface is changing. So you are, I have, it is getting perceived as an edge here. So there may be different uh, factors which may produce edge in real in real life images. And uh, but here what we are want to first of all identify how given an image how can we identify all possible edges. So we have already discussed that our uh, def derivatives will help us to identify the rate of change. So in this image where we are going from high to low and then from low to right high. This is our intensity profile. And if we apply the first derivative, uh, it will have this response here. So along this, uh, from high to low, it will give a negative response. And from low to high, it is going to give a positive response. So we'll normally first derivatives get used, uh, first derivative operator gets used for edge detection more than second derivative. Second derivative is most used for more use for sharpening that we have discussed earlier. First derivative is mostly used for edge detection. Uh, so the first derivative is defined the so as the Laplacian operator was defined for second derivative there is a gradient operator which basically represents the first derivative in for a function here. So the gradient of an image basically is the, is a vector which is made up of the derivative in x direction and the derivative in y direction. Now this because the derivative in x and y may be different and uh, so for example in this image along y direction probably there is no change but if you go in x direction it will have a, a gradient value it will have a first derivative response. So along y direction the gradient will be 0 it will have a gradient only in x direction similarly in this image it will have a grid non zero gradient in y direction whereas a zero in the x direction and this image there is a gradient in both direction so if you calculate both so it's good to represent it as a vector because then you can also get the orientation why we are not trying to combine them as in Laplacian, we would just add the two responses in x and y. Here, it's better to represent it as a vector because now you will have a gradient in x direction, gradient in y direction. So now you can actually, if, uh, if you get that this, we'll see how to get this theta value. So this will give you the edge direction. If you want to know the direction of edge. The direction of edge will be the, uh, the direction in which the rate of change is the highest. So the gradient will point uh, the gradient vector will point in the direction of most rapid increase in, in the intensity value. So this is what we were talking about. If we, if a gradient, if we are representing as a vector, uh, which has two components, gradient in x and gradient in y, then we can use this uh, tan inverse of g y by g x to get the angle of this uh, gradient vector. So normally this gradient vector as we have seen it will point in the direction of the maximum rate of change. So here for this uh, pattern the gradient vector would be in this direction. So alpha which will be the tan, uh, tan inverse of gy by gx will be basically the angle which this vector makes with uh, I think here with y because we are taking gy by gx. So with using this, uh, this, uh, this alpha value, we can actually get the, the gradient direction or the edge direction. So alpha will give you the gradient direction. If you want to get the edge direction, it will be 90 minus alpha because the, the, the edge will be perpendicular to the gradient. So you can subtract 90 degree to get the edge direction. So using image gradient, we can get the magnitude of as well as the angle of uh, the edge. So we can uh, for magnitude purpose we can take a square root of we can add this the magnitude of gradient in x direction and y direction or in we can just take an absolute value. So for simple for computational simplicity we can just take the absolute value of gx and absolute value of gy and add the two sum to get that magnitude of the gradient at uh, of an image.
so these were the operators that we have defined for our first derivative uh, how if you have to represent it as a filter our second derivative filter design was very easy how do we define how will we define our filter for this type of derivative if you have to represent it as a filter because for application purpose we'll have to do a kind we have to take design a filter and then do a correlation or convolution operation so this seems that we need to have plus one here and minus one here if you want to design a filter a two by two filter a simple uh, a two by one filter with plus one here and mm -hmm. minus one here if you want to do a left difference then minus one here and plus one here if you want to do a central difference will be zero here one by two here minus one by two here this left difference will be so uh, we'll see the we'll actually we use a different filter because this is not a good filter it's not uh, but just to show um, how if we if we do this operation if you take the consecutive difference between two pixel in x direction and y direction on this image and plot the response visualize the response we are getting these two responses now which one is along the x direction which one is along y direction which is the gradient along x and which is the gradient along y Hmm. So which one is along x direction which one is along y direction this one is along y shadow of Uh, this part huh 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 so as so as you can see here uh, so along x direction so for example consider this part of the image of this uh, tiger here these are uh here do you think uh, there is a the rate of change is along x direction or y direction here the rate of change is along x direction not along y direction so as you can see this have a higher response here than here so this this is this is the gradient response along x direction rather than y direction similarly here if you see uh, the what the horizontal I just be here the 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 rate of change is more along the y direction than in x direction so we have these regions are more highlighted than here some effect is there uh, but you can see the overall this one is more capturing the uh, the 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 rate of change along the x direction and this one is capturing more the rate of gradient in along the y direction ideally you don't use this filter because first of all it is not symmetric normally as we said we will prefer a three uh, odd size filter because there is no middle pixel here so a central difference operator will be more useful for us because this will give a more three by three. Uh, um, here you can know which is a middle pixel uh, the one that which are more used one is called privet kernel which takes these coefficient values what it basically does it is taking kind of a central difference but it is also doing some kind of a smoothing because now we are taking a more neighborhood a larger neighborhood basically 3 by 3 rather than just taking these three pixels we are taking a whole circular neighborhood around that pixel and then doing an averaging calculating the the rate of change in that entire neighborhood and dividing it by uh according to you. so this will try to reduce the sensitivity that we will see that basically the point is what this first derivative is going to give our is going to be sensitive to discontinuities and noise will also be for noise also it will give a very high response 
and uh, that will cause many times problem so normally we try to minimize uh, the sensitiveness to noise by taking a uh, this uh, take, by defining a kernel uh, where there is some kind of an averaging inbuilt into it uh, the other operation is called other operator that we use for uh, gradient calculation is called sobel operator which as you can see it is doing a weighting also not only the neighborhood but is also weighting it is giving a large weight to the to the center the current the actual location than the name so as you move away from the the center pixel this this the first row and the second row will have less weight the this the the current row will have the larger weight similarly here this current column will have larger weight the the other columns will have less weight so this kind also do, taking into account uh, weighting things because we, earlier also we have seen if we are instead of if you are just using a box filter as compared to a weighted filter or gaussian filter the smoothing was better similarly here also uh, this smoothing and this weighting will give a better response than this taking the other so this is an example of applying the sobel operator on this image so this is a uh, plot of the magnitude of the sobel operator so magnitude means adding the uh, the response in x direction and y direction either the absolute value or square root of gx square plus gy square so this is the image on this image this is the magnitude response and you can see the uh, the edges have a very high very have a very clearly high strong response and other regions which are more uniform they have a low response and you can threshold it you can put a threshold on this and then these will probably these pixels white pixels will correspond to your edge pixels and other pixels will correspond to your non edge pixels this is another example uh, this is the applying sobel operator on the uh, this is the this is the horizontal that is horizontal is the x gradient and vertical is your y gradient and this is the sum of the okay so we'll stop